Well, good day to everybody. How are you doing today? I am Eric Anderson, and we are here once again to take a look at uh, breaking down the mechanics of how to play a good downstroke, which is one of the two types of accents that we play. Uh, but this one here is the one that I genuinely believe challenges a lot of people. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some ideas on how you can use a tennis ball, a penny, and a rubber band to help you better understand good positioning on the drumstick so that you can execute a downstroke that is effortless, that is easy to play, that requires really like a very minimal amount of, of uh, physical work, which is good because it's all about being lazy because lazy is just a four letter word for more efficient and the more efficient or the lazier you can be when you play each note that means that there's a lot more that you can do with all the notes that you're going to play so check this out let me break this down for you first of all we're going to start with the rubber band so the purpose of the rubber band is what I'd like you to do if you need to do this, right, is to wrap this rubber band around the middle, the ring, and the pinky finger. And the purpose of this rubber band is just to remind you of the position that these three fingers need to stay in. These three fingers need to remain bound together, but not real tight or not clenched or anything like that. So the purpose of the rubber band is like if you have that pinky that wants to float out, the rubber band will remind you of that and it will actually cause you to kind of relax your muscles, which is a huge thing, and just let that pinky drop back into place where you want it to be. So again, rubber band around the middle ring and pinky finger just to remind you that these three fingers need to stay bound together. So now we're going to take a look at the fashionable tennis ball. The purpose of this tennis ball, more than anything, and I suggest that you put a pillow under whatever you're going to rest your arm on, but the idea of the downstroke is to, to learn a good downstroke, I believe, starts by doing the least amount necessary. And the idea here is that what I'd like you to do is rest your wrist and your arm either on your practice pad or on a table and all I literally want you to do is keep these three fingers bound together, hold the ball between the thumb and your index finger or your pointer finger. And what I'd like you to do is just let your, let your wrist and your, you know, let your hand at the wrist just flop down like gravity is pulling it down. And then after it flops down, release the tennis ball. And the purpose behind this is to really discover just how little effort that you need to put into getting a loud note. So again, you flop and then you release. One more time, right? You let it flop over and then you release. So now we're just going to put those, the flop and the release together and we're just going to call it a flop. So at the very, very end, I'm just going to release right as I get to the bottom and just let the ball literally fall to the ground. Right, so it's just flop. And you notice how the idea is just that you can relax and just let the weight of your wrist and the weight of the ball kind of project the ball to the ground. Because honestly, this is the exact same thing that I'm asking you to do with your drumstick when I ask you to let it flop. It's just flop over like that and let the ball kind of let the weight of the ball and the weight of your hand project the ball down to the pad so now if that makes a little bit of sense then we're going to get into how the penny comes into play so first of all i want you to grab your drumstick right now bringing bringing back this rubber band issue again remember these three fingers are bound together just lightly held together and they're going to curl around the drumstick but they're not going to clutch and hold the drumstick so that's why the rubber band is there is just remember keep these fingers together and just keep them around the stick so that it has a little bit of wiggle in it okay now where the penny comes into play and this is like a cool little trick uh it first of all you need to get your thumb kissing this knuckle right here where the hand and the finger join together and what i want you to do 
is I want you to place the penny right in between this knuckle and this thumb knuckle so that in essence you have to hold this penny in place. Now the idea here is that you don't tighten up your thumb and try to press it real hard into this knuckle. The penny will stay right there as long as this, as, think about it like this, as long as this thumb knuckle is just kind of kissing this upper knuckle, that penny will stay in place. The other thing to take a look at too is that your thumb position on the stick, if you see, you know, you can see that the tip of the thumb is just a little bit ahead of the index finger and the, and the thumb is going to be at what I say is about 45 degrees off top dead center of the stick. So it's not at the full 90 degrees, like point, you know, facing to the east. It's not to the north. You can consider it if you were looking at it as a compass, this would be at a northeast position. And here's why. So the quick review. Three fingers bound together and curled around the stick, but not clutching the stick. The thumb is at about 45 degrees on the stick, and the thumb tip is a little bit ahead of the index finger, and this penny is just lightly resting right in between the thumb knuckle as it kisses the knuckle on your hand. Now you go back to the tennis ball idea, and literally all I want you to do is hold the stick up like this, just like you were holding the tennis ball, Keep the fingers curled around the stick, keep the thumb in place, and literally just like you play, just like you allowed the tennis ball to, to kind of throw itself down to the ground, you're going to allow the stick just to kind of project itself down to the pad, and then you're going to stop the stick at a low position. So it'll look like this, just flop, flop, flop. Flop. And you notice how, because I keep my thumb in this position at 45 degrees and these back three fingers are curled around the stick but not clutching the stick, when the drumstick comes down and strikes the pad, you notice how it stops low to the pad, like it's parallel to the pad. This is one of the accents that we play and it's called a downstroke. And what that means is that the stick tip starts high before the note is played and then the stick, tip, the stick tip stops low after the note is played. So it starts high to low. High, low. High, low. Now, just so you know, I'm not tightening up my thumb on the drumstick to get the stick to stay low. I am not curling my fingers. I'm not clenching onto the stick or clutching the stick with these back three fingers. Literally what's happening is when the stick goes down and makes contact with the pad, the stick bounces up a little bit and between the thumb position here and the finger position here, just the right placement of the thumb and the back three fingers prevents the stick from kicking up any higher. And that's, that's the essence of playing a downstroke where the stick starts high, strikes the pad under it, it strikes the pad. Hold on, I, I ran out of the thought, right? It's the, the sound that you get from the pad is the result of the weight of your hand and the weight of the stick being projected into the pad, but you're not driving it, you're not pushing it at all. You're just literally letting it flop into place. And with these fingers rightly placed and this thumb rightly placed, you notice that your stick doesn't kick up. So one more time, right? High, low, high, flop, low, high, flop, low, high, flop, low. So that, my friends, is the way, excuse me, that, my friend, is the way, there it is, right, that a rubber band, a penny, and a tennis ball can help you better understand the ways uh, the, the, the mechanics and the principle behind a well-executed downstroke. And because the well-executed downstroke it, it can make all of your notes so much easier to play. They sound so much natural. They, they don't sound like they're tight. 
Uh, it also does not cause you to speed up or slow down because you're in a very relaxed state, which enables you to play in tempo with the metronome or with the rest of the ensemble and not struggle nearly as much. And one last thing to hit here, what I showed you is just how to play a drumstick. And in this particular case is how to play a drumstick on a practice pad. But this gets increasingly more difficult when we start moving our way like around this fashionable drum set here that I'm gonna pan over to. As you start to move those sticks around this drum set, this idea of good downstrokes and good upstrokes, which we'll cover in the next video, becomes increasingly more difficult because now not only do you have the vertical motion of the stick that you have to that you have to control, but now then you also have the horizontal or the lateral motion or the side to side motion of moving from one drum to the next drum and back to their first drum. And then you have the independence issues of the right hand moving in one direction while the left hand is moving in another direction. And at the same time, each hand is trying to play its respective accent and tap patterns while you're moving around. So this idea of well-executed downstrokes has a monster impact on your ability to play any drum set, whether it's a big drum set, kind of like this one, or whether it's like Slim Jim Phantom from the Stray Cats that has only a snare drum, only the bass drum, and only, let me get that up there, and only the fashionable ride cymbal. So that, my friends, that is my rumor, and I'm sticking to it. Please spend time with these accents and these taps and these bucks exercises, and if you need to, get the tennis ball, get the rubber band, get the penny, Put them in the places that I showed you on this and just let that stick flop over. Because the goal of this video was to give you some ideas on how to, how to develop and, and perform well-executed downstrokes. So I'm just going to ask you real quick, did the video do just that for you? Does it help? Does it give you some usable ideas that you can use to improve some of the accents that you play? If your answer is yes, first and foremost, Share it with other drummers that you know that could benefit in the same way. Because honestly, that's what I desire more than anything is just putting that information out there and letting and getting as many people to use it as possible. Also, because this is YouTube, the likes and the subscribes are hugely appreciated all the time. But if we didn't get it, please do not be afraid to ask the question that you need to ask be, because we didn't explain it that well. And I will be more than happy to circle back around and go deeper and deeper into these details to help you understand the, the mechanics of playing a well-executed downstroke. So that's it, my friends. I am Eric Anderson. We are done on this breakdown of downstrokes, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.